Welcome to Take Note TV. I'm Emerald, and joining me today, I've got the wonderful Sarita, hey. who's actually playing with me in room one at the new Tobacco Doc Virtual Club. Yeah, exciting, right? It's going to be brilliant. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you, considering yes. I, there's light at the end of the tunnel after that news for June, so mm -hmm. I'm feeling a bit more hopeful. A bit more yeah. um, realigned now. Yes, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for sure. I just want to start off by asking you what motivates you and what motivated you in the first place to start playing music? Well I, well, I love music in general, but I feel that I want to be that person that people can relate to when they see me and look at me and think, you know, there's a space for me in this industry mm -hmm. as well. Um, I love human connection. I love being around people. I love as a raver, first, first and foremost, I love being able to just have that feeling of when someone just made, plays an amazing set, that feeling that you get, being able to do that to somebody else, mm -hmm. just, oh, it just gives me those, those goosebumps, so yeah. Yeah, it gives you them chills, <laughs> for sure. Other than the obvious, yeah. fun, dancing, music, what is it about the club scene that makes it so special to people, do you think? Uh, I think it's... It's like a community, isn't it? You know, it's a place where it's a bit of an escapism where you can just leave your worries at home and just take your mask off and then just enter into the rave and then you're just a different person. You can just let go and just be whoever you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and was I think... There, was there a pun intended they were taking your mask off? <laughs> teasing me now. I can't wait for that moment. You can Tell take a mask off and go into yeah, the yeah. rave. <laughs> yeah, That's sure. a good one, actually. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I think, you know, just meeting people that you know nothing about, but just connecting with them on a level, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about He, She, They, Ooh. which is a place where you're a resident at. Yes. How long have you been a resident there? Um, it's been just over a year now, I think, mm -hmm. probably coming up to the second. I met them at IMS in Ibiza a few years ago, a couple of years ago this year. Um, and then I started playing for them about three months later at nice. their first party. Yeah, it's the most amazing party brand. You know, they've got a label, a, a fashion label, house and techno party. Their, their ethos is no judgment, a party for all. You know, they shine spotlights on marginalised communities. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's just an amazing thing to be part of. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the magic behind He, She, They and about, like, can you, can you paint a picture? Can you describe a scene for me of a He, She, They party? Oh, it's fucking <laughs> crazy. That's what it is. It is insane. Like, you go and you look around and at first you're like, where am I? And you're like, this is brilliant. <laughs> there is all walks of life in there for every race, gender, every, everything. And... You just feel at home, you just feel welcome, you just feel, you know, just feel part of a family when you go there. The music's great, the people are amazing, there's no judgement, you know, just things from gender neutral toilets, just little things like that, they just consider and they're thoughtful about everything. So yeah, it's, mm. it's great. It's a magical place. It is so magical. Is. I advise everybody to come to a Hishi <laughs> Day party. <laughs> Let's talk about residencies yeah. versus new lineup so yeah. a residency at a club is is something quite different yeah. to where the industry often heads with these brand new fresh new lineups new 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 every single time which is mm. a great thing in itself mm. because we have to allow for newness to come through and yeah. i'm an avid supporter of that myself but what do you think is beautiful about a residency and what do you think a residency can achieve that the the opposite can't i think residences are you feel like you belong to a family you, I think when you go and see somebody on a regular basis, you kind of have a personal connection with them. You, you see their journey week in, week out, month or for the season that they're playing. Mm. And I think you just get that general deeper connection to the artists themselves. Um, and you just know what you're going to get when you walk into that room, the vibe that you're going to get, the emotions that you're going to feel. I just think residencies are just amazing things to have. Mm -hmm. Music's always been about unity. It's mm. always been about community, like we were just speaking about. It's about that community feel and uniting people on a dance floor, no matter where they're from and who they are, yeah. all through a shared passion for music and for dance. How do you feel that the industry and fans and music itself can push towards an even more diverse playing field? 
Do you know, I think it starts at the top with the promoters. I think they have to be more thoughtful with their lineups, you know, um, become more diverse on their lineups so we can see that. I think it's scary to think that the younger generation coming through love this music, but they have no idea where the origins start from, you know. Um, a lot of people won't know that the house music started in the black queer community. Um, if you're looking at it from the outside, it looks like it's probably cis white men, because that's all you basically see on lineups. We're not short of talent out there. There's so much. There's, we're not lacking in female DJs. We're not lacking in DJs of colour. So I just think that there's enough talent out there to make diverse, um, to make lineups as diverse as, as a standard, mm, you know? Sure. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> it's so true, we're not lacking. We're not, we're lacking. not lacking. There's it's just so about, much talent out there. It's about the people in charge to, to recognise and to yeah, pull that and out. Yeah, and don't just do it because you feel you have to. Just pick any female out of the hat because that's because what you have female. to do. Because they're a girl, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, you just got to be more thoughtful and just look around at the talent and bring everyone through. For sure. Let's talk about the pause. Mm, the pause. The pause. The big pause <laughs> that we're all going through at the moment. The music industry has been on pause for yes. a long time. A lot, I mean, many other industries are also on pause. Yeah. And like we were saying earlier, it feels like there is a light at the, tu uh, light at the end of the tunnel yeah. at the moment. But it's been really difficult, especially for young artists and emerging artists with the financial pressures mm. and the lack of a creative outlet and not being able to express themselves. What kind of journey have you been through creatively during the, this pause? Do you think that that things have changed compared to yourself from now compared to March? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel that I appreciate the smaller things so much more in life. I thought I did anyway, but having time to just reflect and having time to work on myself, because I've had nothing else to do, but to basically go within and just learn stuff about myself. I've learned to be a lot more grateful for the things that I have. Um, I've started producing during the lockdown, which has been amazing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a good process for me. Wicked. Yeah. I started producing. I did. Yes. How's that going? Um, it's going well. It's going well. I'm hoping to get some stuff out over the next couple of months. So, okay, yeah. I'm excited to hear <laughs> that. Keep your eyes peeled. So if anyone out there was watching us now or listening to what we have to say and they were just considering and just beginning a career in the music industry and they're, they're seeing how many people are considering leaving the music industry and changing jobs because there's not much promise at the moment, what would you say to the ones who really want to hold out and stick to that dream and carry on going and pushing for it? I think definitely hold out. Um, obviously, there's no, there's no certainty in this industry at the moment, but if you're passionate about being in the music industry, then follow your, follow your dreams. If COVID has taught us anything, it's that life's too short and things can be taken away from you in an instant. So you could go and change and be and work in a nine to five that you hate and that job still be taken away from you. So you might as well follow the path that you love and yeah, I think it'll just be better that way. <laughs> so moved, honestly. <laughs> that was a good one. Do you have plans to produce music? You've already asked, answered this yeah. one. You're producing music currently at the moment. Yeah. But what have you been doing tech-wise? There's so many options at the moment. There's so much new technology and software at the moment. What there is, is so much and it's baffling just looking at it all because I'm still confused to be fair when I look at it all. Um, I have Logic and I have Ableton um, but I found the workflow with Ableton was better for me. Um, I bought Ableton Push and that's just made it so much more exciting because you're just hands-on and you're kind of like tapping in everything. Um, I have plugins that I have that are my favourite, like Rob Papham, I'm a bass girl, so the bass on that has just been amazing. I'm just, literally every day I'm just learning new things. I'm at my laptop, at my computer, just 10 hours a day, just going crazy, but um, yeah, it's been <laughs> fun and frustrating, but it's, it's worth it. Good. <laughs> yeah. It can be tough to support yourself in the early days of a music career, even throughout. It can be financially tough for a very long time. There's very little job protection in working in music. How do you suggest young artists manage pursuing a career in music as well as financially supporting themselves? I think it's quite important to have a financial stability. Um, I feel that you should 
take that plunge when you know that you're going to have a, a stable income in the music career. Like I gave my work, my full-time job up in January um, to pursue music full-time and that's because I knew that there would be a regular income coming through otherwise I wouldn't. I kind of had a full-time job and then I windled it down to like three days then two days and then I was like right I'm ready. Hey. Um, <laughs> so I think you should have definitely have a means to support yourself because you can't be creative if you're constantly worrying about where your money's coming from. Mm -hmm. So definitely have a, a, a backup plan to, mm -hmm. to keep you going. How did it feel making the jump? Shit scary. <laughs> I think I put it off so many times and I kept telling myself, oh, I'll just do it next month, I'll just do it next yeah. month because it's just, that's it. You're, you're out on your own then and you've just, you've got to make it. But I think it gives you more of a drive yeah. and more of a passion to do well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. Yeah. And then COVID happened. And then COVID <laughs> happened. Yeah. I always think there's that change that happens in you when you decide to call yourself something. Yeah. So when you're like, I am a DJ. Yeah. And it's scary, right? It the is. first time it comes out of your mouth, or you're like, I'm a presenter, or any, any avenue you pursue in music. Yeah. But it's important to do that. It is. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. For real. Gaming. Let's talk about gaming. gaming because oh I hear a little bird told me that you used to be a bit of a gaming addict. I used to love gaming. <laughs> Gaming was just like, oh, I can't even explain. You just immerse yourself into another character and you have to play this role and that is you. You are, like, I'm doing this because obviously it's Call of Duty. <laughs> like, like, yeah. um, you have to be this person, this other person. You have to, you know, you feel like this is you. And literally, I've, I've, been, I've, got, I've got up with Faye. Sorry, Faye's my partner. Um, I've got up in the morning when she's gone to work and I've put the computer on, I've started playing games. I've, you know, I've moved the sofa closer to the TV and right, I'm ready for this day. And then she's come home like 12 hours later and I'm still in the same position. <laughs> so yeah, gaming is amazing, but there comes a point where you have to choose between the mm -hmm. gaming and your wife. So yeah, <laughs> oh <laughs> you know where goodness. that went. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> right? What's your, your go-to game, though? Obviously, Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty else? was my... Like, God of War was another one. I love, like, sports games as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just, just everything. I'm just anything that I can just be yeah. an adrenaline junkie with. What do you hope to experience with this event in particular, with, with Tobacco Doc Virtual? It's, a, it's an event in a full VR setting. Mm. It looks visually amazing. Um, what do you hope people can get from your set in particular? I just hope they have as much fun as I did. Hey. Um, I had a great time play, um, playing that set. It was amazing. So I hope that they have as much fun as me. I mean, it's the next best thing to raving because, you know, I did one similar at Christmas and um, me and my flatmates, like, we made avatars and you get to choose your clothes and then you get to, like, choose your own dance moves and it's literally, you can have conversations with the next person on the dance floor. It's basically like being in the rave, but you're just not physically there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's amazing. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it as well, <laughs> man. I can't wait. It's going to be so, be so good. Cool, I haven't done it? one yet. Oh, my God. So that they're, sounds they're fun. Yeah, like, they're brilliant. It's like wait gaming. Wait till you do it. Um, so obviously there's a craving for live events at the moment. Yeah. Like in a, in a big, big way. I mean, I hope that everybody's craving it as much as we are. Yeah, definitely. And we're moving towards bringing that back. What do you think these VR experiences can satisfy while we wait? Do you think they can satisfy any sort of part of us while we wait? I think they can to an extent, as I said, it's because it's quite, it's just the next best thing to it. Um, you get the options of being able to talk to the person next to you. You can go up to the to the DJ. You can you can dance on the stage. You can basically do what you would do in a club. Um, so it, it's it is satisfying to a degree, but it's never going to be the same, is it? Not to be fair, be <laughs> never going to be the same. Oh, but it's so it's great. Fun. It's definitely great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Sarita. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely to meet you and to yes. chat to you today. Looking Likewise. forward to your set. Definitely. Yeah. Likewise, it's going to be amazing, right? It's going to be wicked. <laughs> Can't wait. You've been watching Take Note TV. I'm Emerald. This was Sarita. And we'll see you soon. See you later. It's weird. It's weird.